Oh, hey, we were talking. Hey, that's us. <laughs> we were talking because we have uh, one of our favorite people, and uh, we, we've spoken with him before. He's nice enough to join us now from your Oakland Athletics, Stephen Piscotti. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great, guys. We were just talking off the air. Uh, you are uh, all, all rested and recovered? Yeah. Um, I've been rehabbing from a, a wrist, actually multiple wrist surgeries um, from the off season, and um, through that process, sometimes when you're getting back, certain swings and other body part body parts start to bark um and so i was in la yesterday i had a cortisone shot in my left um kind of shoulder lat area um that, Dude, those hurt huh right they don't feel good no, no they don't feel good they feel good after and i yeah. felt good this morning swinging so that was that was a relief um and then hopefully get back into some game action here soon. So you've, I mean, as far as, I, I don't know if you're ever 100%, but how close to, to feeling ready to start a season are you? Um, at this point, I'd say I'm, I'm up there, 85, 90%. Okay. I think I need to get in and see some, a, some pit live uh, arm and, and get some ABs in. Um, but once I can check that box, probably get up to that 100, 100 mark. We got to ask you because we, of course, have to ask you. Listen, we've come down here for years. We love this organization. We love the people in this organization. But you've heard it all. We've heard it all. The 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 stadium. The are they moving? Uh, everyone's traded. Blah blah blah. What is it like in the clubhouse? Player, you Bo Mel's gone. Uh, that's got to be huge. Mark's in now. Um, when you go into this season, I know it's business as usual, but does that take a toll on you at all? Is yeah, I mean, it's definitely a change. There's no doubt about it. This this will be my fifth year with the A's, and, um, you know, this this season especially is, you know, quite a bit different um, optically, you know, in the clubhouse. But I, I would say the culture is still the same. We had um, some really good spring training meetings where, you know, kind of setting the expectation of, of um, you know, what we expect to do, which is still to go out and compete and win games. Um, I think that uh, – you know, while there's some different faces, I think a lot of guys are getting some some cool opportunities to show what they can do. And um, this system for for years and years and years is always you know flooded with talent. So you know, there's gonna be some new guys step up, and I think that was kind of the message. You know, who's gonna step up next? You know, there's definitely some big big holes and voids, but uh, who's gonna who's gonna come in and, and take those spots? You brought up the word culture, which is such a big phrasing in, in sports, but in your time here, and you've been in other organizations too with St. Louis, but here. What is it about the A's clubhouse? Because whether it's been a more veteran team, a younger team, it seems like it's consistently been well run and strong. How, what would you put your finger on? Why is this clubhouse always so good? I would say that this team um, and the group of guys in there, especially from the the, the coaching staff too, they just love baseball. Um, they just want to they want to practice. They want to play. Um, who cares where you're playing? Who you're playing? We just want to play. And, yeah. Um, I noticed that my first day coming over here back in, in 2018 was just that these guys like to like to hit. You know, they're, <laughs> yeah. they want to go in the cage and just work and work and work. And I love that. And um, not that it wasn't that, like that in St. Louis, but there was a little bit more of, you know, get some work, but we want you to work on your body and not do things. It, here it's just like go play. Go right. play and, and, and uh, get better. And um, I love that. And I think that the, the culture, you know, there's still – don't get me wrong. You still got um, a lot of you know big names in that clubhouse who are keeping that culture going right now. And um, I don't know. We just like to play ball. We were talking about that exact thing earlier, the culture of the A's and how the, every year it's like, oh, the A's don't spend any money. And then it's like every other year the A's are competing for the playoffs somehow. Yeah. And that, that culture just – it's it's almost like the same type of clubhouse going all the way back to Jason Giambi and then all the way up here. They're just freewheeling, cool guys that love to play. And and I got to ask you, with Billy Bean, because he's been really the big through line there, do you think if you had to guess, obviously he's looking at numbers, he's scouting, he's doing all that stuff, but do you think he puts a lot into the type of person he acquires for that clubhouse? I really think he does, and I I don't know that I'm I'm guessing, sure. but just from from um, you know the guys that that he and David have brought in, um, they just seem to fit in right away, and um, you know that could be the homework that they're doing, or it could be the fact that you know a player gets to the the clubhouse and sees how things are are operated, run, and the attitudes of guys that they just quickly get in line with how everyone else is to to assimilate and to fit in. So um, it's probably a little bit of both, but um, yeah, I mean there's there's not, I can't name a bad egg in, in our clubhouse over sure. the last five years where it's, um, you're like, ah, oh, this guy's with us, you know, <laughs> right, that right, sort of right. thing. So it's, um, that makes it a lot of fun. That makes it a lot of fun. You've had success with this organization. What's your 
role this year? What is what is your anticipation of what you will mean to this team this season? Yeah, I think you know I've thought about that, and I think I I want to kind of carry the torch that um, you know has been set over the last four years here. You know, it's been a work, winning organization for so long, and this year's not going to be any different. You know, um, there's going to be expect an expectation to win. I mean, that's how you got to practice. That's how you got to play. That's how you got to develop, because yep. um, that's what it's all about. Um, and so hopefully I can carry that torch and, and, you know, the way I'm not a big vocal guy, but I like to try to lead by example and, and, um, you know, put my work in and hopefully others see that and, and just follow along and we'll have a good time doing it. Well, and, and, and they do. And, and, and I would think you're aware that they do not just people that play with you, but also fans, Steven, I still hear, and I'm sure you do too, about what you went through years ago and how you carried yourself and how that affected so many people and how you carried yourself through that horrible time. And I can only imagine your teammates, both past and present, also have such tremendous respect for you. Uh, you're not a rookie anymore, but you're not near the end of your career. I mm-hmm. got to think you come into the clubhouse knowing that maybe you're not the most vocal guy, but people do look at you uh, as an example. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate hearing that, and it, it definitely makes me feel good, and it gives me, you know, a sense of responsibility to to continue that way, um, and to you know give it my best, and and I think, uh, you know, that's that's part of the reason I love giving you know everything to this game. I, I just love playing and and love being around the guys, and um, yeah, it's just uh, I feel blessed to be able to do this, and so it's it's something that I don't take lightly, and um, you know, this is gonna be it's gonna be a fun year. There's, there's no doubt, no doubt about it. This is gonna be another fun year. We were talking earlier, too, about the the one consistency was Bob Melvin. Great manager. Mm-hmm. That's voice you heard all the time. Yep. Now it's a new one. Mark Hotze, how do you think he'll do? I think he's going to do great. Um, as soon as he got – well, he got the job and there was a lockout, so we can communicate. <laughs> right. Um, but as soon as the lockout was lift was lifted, um, he called me and and uh, wanted to check in on, on how I was doing. And um, that's one thing that uh, – you know, Bob was really good at, and I don't know if he's going to kind of follow in his footsteps a little bit, but he, he's, Katsai has said it to a lot, a, a lot of us that, you know, communication is going to be key um, going through this, this season and, and for him through his, his coaching tenure. So um, we're looking forward to what he brings. He brings a lot of energy, a lot of excitement, um, and he, he's the right man for the job. I'm really excited for it. Steve Biscotti with us down in Mesa, Arizona, Hoho Camp Park, home of the Ace Spring Training as uh, we're getting underway here. Road game for them today. We we're talking about uh, some of the rule adjustments, and, you know, we can sit here and talk all we <laughs> want. Uh, always curious what a player thinks. Let's start with the big one, DH in the National League. I think it's the right move. Um, I, I came up in the National League, and I think there was a little bit more strategy in those games. Um, that being said, I, th- I thought coming over to the American League when I was traded it was gonna be like, ah, it's right. not gonna be the same. This is kind of yeah. boring. There's no moves, you know. Yeah. But it boring. <laughs> um, I I ended up really really liking it, and I think it's the right the move. I think um, you know there's been some injuries, and you see certain things happen. And you're like, oh, why this looks kind of ridiculous, and um, all that sort of stuff. But I, I genuinely didn't think I would like it, and then got here. I was like, this is a cleaner game. This is more seemed more competitive um and so I, I think it's the right call um but yeah i knew i was gonna lose that one <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm a national league guy yeah and we were just yeah. talking yeah. about small ball double switches you and know the strategy like maybe pitch gone. hitters yeah. and all that but i hear you as a player yeah you know you know i spent um you know i wasn't in a full-time starting role last year and there's there was chaos just around pinch hitting and stuff and then you throw in double switches because we had some national league games where you go and then it's chaos in the dag out. Like there's certain, they've got like three different scenarios lined up for if a guy hits a fly ball ground ball or strikes out or whatever. And then right. it's just like, go, go, go. So it's, I don't know. I think it's a little cleaner. Um, it takes some strategy out. There's no doubt. There's, there's a pro and con to everything. So I got to ask you this. We had a question, a fun question earlier in the show for Dave, myself and Jay back at our studio. <laughs> What's the one thing that we think, we could pull off as a professional baseball player. Like, so we, none of us thought we could get a hit. We, we knew we better. Get a hit. Um, Jay nope. back at the studio, I think, said he thought he could fe- successfully field a bunt and throw someone out first. Okay. I said, okay. I said, maybe the only position I think I could play is first. Now, I'm not going to get every grounder. Someone throws at 90 over there. I might be scared. But I, <laughs> And Dave, yours was? I said that, well, at first I said one thing. I yeah, listened to it. this one. Okay, so hear me out. <laughs> Because, by the way, we couldn't do any of it. Right. Let's just be but clear. But, like, to have a chance. But if we're in Vegas <laughs> betting, I said probably my best chance would be to get it out as a pitcher 
only because I've seen position players come in and throw junk ball 51 mile an hour at the <laughs> yeah. end, and a guy just swings out of his shoes and it ends up being a shot to third. I said, I, I might get lucky and they hit and, it to and, somebody. And they hit it to somebody, and that might happen. Yeah, that's a good one. I, if you could throw a strike, yeah. Right. That, that would. That would uh, somebody like you is going to lick their chops and just try to mash it. I hate those at bats. Oh, I hate those at bats. It's so. I mean, it's it's abnormal, right? It's totally different. Yeah. Yeah. uh, What? I don't. I don't. So that that's a good one. Um, It's like getting in a a fist fight with a kid. Like either way, you lose. Like if you win, you beat up a kid, and if you lose, the kid beat you up. Same thing with position player gets you. Yeah. Yeah. We we said this between the three of us, Dave and I, and Jay back in studio. Could we get Tony Kemp out in a pickle? (laughs) I don't think so. (laughs) I don't think so. No chance. I could spit and I could scratch. Yeah. That's that is. (laughs) You guys are missing one. I mean, just catching a lazy fly ball. That's what we said. I'm out there. I mean, you guys could do. Yeah, I can't afford, can't afford. Like, you know, we're not robbing anybody or running one down on the track. No, but that, no. yeah, it doesn't happen. But just a fly ball, yeah. Fly okay. ball. Yeah. What about the uh, runner on second extra innings? They're keeping it. it around this year. Oh, love love it. It. Mm. Oh. See, okay. I don't. I know there's like what is it called? Baseball purists that right. want everything the same right. way, but um, just as a player, extra innings is it's just the last thing you want, right? <laughs> it's uh, and I think I don't know. We we. Obviously, you've done it for, I think we did it in 2020. I can't remember, but um, that's a bit of a strategy moment. You sure. got a guy right on second. Do you want to bump him over? Do you want to have the guy um, move him over with, you know, trying to you know, force it over there? Do you want to just let him swing away? So that I, I don't mind it at all. Um, I love the seven inning double hitter as well. Yes. Um, you know, baseball, there's a lot of talk, right? You want to speed up the game and all this sort of stuff. And, Extra innings to me is just a, a place where the game can kind of really balloon up and really just take forever. And I don't know when you're playing every day, you don't want to be there till eleven thirty at night. Right? You know, just trying to get a guy on second, yeah. so they put him already there. When you're watching every day at home, yes. you don't want. Yeah, you don't want to be up until midnight <laughs> watching yeah. that. And I know pitchers were concerned. Yeah, but that run doesn't count against them. So yeah. I think. You're probably already computing in your head. I got to be back here in six hours or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Jay, back home. Did you say I couldn't hear you? Did you say, did you say one minute? You did. you did say one minute. Okay, so we'll wrap up. Listen, uh, we always love talking to you. Yes, um, we were actually. You know, we're sad to see everybody go. We were talking earlier about Chappie going, yeah. and he's also one of our, along with you and a few as one of our favorites. But just having that through line, having that culture, we're so glad that you're back, and so glad yeah. that you're going to have the ability to be there for these fans. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, and it's always great seeing you guys and, and catching yeah. up and, and chatting. Hopefully, we see you down um, at the Coliseum yeah. as well. And uh, yeah, but this is going to be a fun year. I know that there's a lot of shock in, in, and yeah. uh, and all that, but. Yeah. Um, we're going to keep the keep the thing going here, so awesome. don't worry about it. There's no one better than Stephen Biscotti to talk to. A uh, lot of health on the field we're looking forward to. We'll be back in Mesa, Arizona tomorrow, Camp Park. For Jason, for Jay, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye now.